Welcome to Mile High Reefers. I'm Scott Anderson, and it's time for another tank update. We're shooting downstairs today because the lights aren't on the tank yet upstairs. But hey, this is when I have time to shoot. So to give you guys the first update, the last week or so, I've been sick. So it means I haven't done that much to the tanks. Unfortunately, I've been sick, Ian's been sick, my wife's been sick, it's been a rough week. So the tank hasn't seen as much love and attention, but it doesn't mean things have gone poorly up there. All right, now for the cool stuff. The best show of the year, in my opinion, is Reef Stock. It's right around the corner. It's March 7th and 8th in Denver, Colorado. I will be there at least on Saturday the 7th. I'm gonna try to make it there on the 8th, so I encourage all of you who can make it to join me at Reefstock 2020. Should be an amazing time. They've got a new venue, so I'm really excited to see what Reef Builders does with this year's Reefstock. So the last time we really looked at this tank, I added three tanks to the tank upstairs. And the biggest problems I was worried about were basically aggression and the it coming back. Well, the aggression was very minimal. I was really happy with the way that worked out. I've got five tanks, five genuses, minimal aggression. That process worked as well as I could possibly hope for. The ick is a slightly different story because I did see a few spots of ick on the powder brown and the blue tang. Powder brown, I saw one spot on him, which is pretty good. Blue tang had quite a few actually. So that was a little disappointing. Now, the problem I have is the way you eliminate ick from a reef tank is to pull all the fish out and put them in quarantine. And you need to do that for up to 72 days. A lot of people will do four to six weeks, but 72 days is what you have to do if you want to fully eliminate it. Now, I don't really have any good way to quarantine that many fish, especially that big flamingo. The other problem is, is I'd have to tear all the rock work out to catch all the fish. Certain ones just will not work in the fish trap. That big flamingo, he won't even fit in that thing anymore. And the blue tang, he won't even go in it anymore. He's seen it too many times. So, like I said in a video many years ago, when I did it on living with ick, sometimes you have to decide, is your tank a reef tank? or a coral tank with fish, or a fish tank with coral. For me, it's a coral tank with fish. Now, I'm not too worried about the ick. Ick is kind of like a bad flu. If your fish are healthy and strong, there's a good chance that they're gonna develop that slime coat and be able to get rid of it on their own. Marine velvet, on the other hand, is a different story. Marine velvet is like Ebola. It goes through and the mortality rate is incredibly high. And marine velvet is the main reason I quarantine every fish that goes in. Since I'm probably not getting rid of all of the ick, I do need to make sure marine velvet does not get in that tank because that would be a death sentence to everything in there. So I still fully recommend quarantine, even on a system like mine, where it turns out the ick is still there. I hadn't seen it in a couple years, but I had a sneaking suspicion that it was still there. There's a common misconception in this hobby that says every reef tank has ick in it, but that's not 100% true. It is possible to build a setup where ick never makes it in. If you quarantined every fish in copper and everything that's wet, rocks, invertebrates, corals for 72 days, you could, in theory, keep ick and marine velvet out of your reef tank. But in reality, I would say probably 95% of tanks out there, at least old tanks out there, have ick in them. And the bigger the tank, with more coral, more fish, more everything going into them, the more likely it is to have it. So some of us, unfortunately, have to learn to live with ick. And that's kind of where I've been 
for quite a while and it's been okay. I'm not going to say I recommend it, but I think it's probably the boat a lot of us are in. Now that we've got all the jibber jabber out of the way, let's go see how the fish and coral are doing in the big tank. The tangs that I added are doing fantastic. The powder brown had that one little spot of ick we talked about. The yellow tang is a tank raised yellow tang, which means they all got HLLE. Since he's moved upstairs, he started to fatten up. His color's looking better. He's doing a lot better. And the Tamini, he's more of a cryptic tang. He likes to hide in the background and come out. He goes in and around the corals, but he's not really out front like the other fish. It's just really his personality. It's really cool to have those different personalities in the tank. The blue tang had that one big ick outbreak. I'm not too worried about him. He's been gaining weight. He's looking really good other than some scars from the ick. And of course, the Blamingi is doing so well, eventually I'm gonna have to rehome him because he's just getting so big. But these days, the way he looks, the color is amazing. I love that fish. My little Zoa garden I put on the right side of the tank is starting to fill in. I've got those green pallies I need to get rid of before they become a problem but really this section's starting to do its thing. The growth champion though has to be these watermelon zoas on the left side of the tank. I put it in as that one little frag and it has just exploded and started growing over everything. I love this look. I'm so happy about the way this is turning out. I am gonna have to move that little Satosa on the left as it's gonna get overgrown. My little section of frags is really growing in and starting to look really cool. I'm just loving the way this looks. I love having frags in a tank, but long term, this will all be colonies. But right now, it's really starting to look cool and I'm interested to see how it all grows together. My crazy tea Monty is getting much closer to the color it's supposed to be. It should be really a yellow with purple. Now we've kind of got the yellow with a little red mixed in with the purple polyps. This is a cool coral and I really hope it starts growing out fast. My little chalice section, it's up top, highlight, and it's doing pretty good. I'm not quite getting the colors out of it that these corals should be. The one on the right is Cherry Garcia. It should be more red and green, but actually I really like the orange. And the one next to it should be more purple and yellow. And it's just kind of muted colors. I just don't think it likes the super high light that it's in. And then the Grafted Monty is doing really well. The colors are fantastic on it. I love it. It looks just like it did when it came from WWC. We've got the green and then the red with the yellow polyps. The only downside to this coral is the red grows much faster than the green, making that grafted portion really hard to get that full grafted look. The Montes are growing incredibly fast and looking pretty darn good. There's a couple of them like this Spungoda and that plating slash encrusting one that don't quite have the color I'd like to see, but it's hard for me to want to make a big change to this system, like adjust the lighting or mess with the water chemistry to really make two corals happy. My little section of brains continues to look great. They don't really do that much, but I just love the way they look and the patterning and the colors. I love brains. This little pectinia I bought with buyer's remorse. I bought it at the frag swap and it was an amazing color under the deep blues. But when I brought it home, put it in my tank, I just did not like the color. It was basically brown. Well, in the last about three years, it has really colored up and got some cool colors. It has like this burgundy base with some greens and turquoise and reds running through it. This is one of my favorite pectinias. And I got it completely by accident because it looks nothing like it did when I bought it. And when I owned it for years, 
I thought it was the ugliest coral. But here it is, now I love it. My little golden frog spawn has really started to grow quickly now that I've moved it from lower light to high light. It's a loving the light, it's loving its position, and I've got one head that's split into three heads, so I'm really excited to see how this coral does here. It's doing fantastic. And speaking of fantastic, my entire Euphelia garden is killing it. The only one that's still slightly disappointing me is this gold section, which no, I'll be generous and call it green gold. That one did change colors on me. And depending on the time of day and the lighting, it does go much more gold. It's growing fantastic, it's healthy. It just doesn't have the color that it used to. And I'm real happy about the way this section's starting to work out. We got this big toadstool. This one, it was a struggle ever since I first put it in the tank, but it's really taken off and started doing well on the left side. It's got this kind of teal color. It's got those longer polyps to it. It loves the highlight and flow. Next to it are the Pali Grandis, which I wish had more green, but they're still a really cool coral, followed by the green button polyps. They're another Pali that I absolutely love. Slow growing, don't take over. But next to it's a little brain and a gorg, but it's all just kind of in between the SPS and the LPS, and I've really been trying to work on my zoning, so it's not just a big section of SPS, LPS, and softies. Hydnophora is one of those corals that just has a really bad reputation in the hobby for being aggressive. Maybe I've got a special strain of it, but the color on this is amazing. The growth has been fantastic. It looks so cool there. It looks like it should be from an alien planet. Hydnophora is one of those corals you can pick up stupid cheap and it's absolutely amazing. I'm going from a yeah, maybe if you know what you're doing recommendation on Hydnophora to, you know what, get Hydnophora. Hydnophora is a cool coral. Oh, my toadstools and devil hands aren't the brightest corals in the world. I absolutely love the way they look, the way the fish interact with them, and they're beautiful. They're easy to take care of. Really, I'm just loving the way this section works. And if you've got a big tank with a big section to fill, this is a really inexpensive way to do it. My clam is doing fantastic. My clownfish keep laying eggs on it. There's like nothing here but absolute joy and happiness for the way this section is working out. My big green bubble continues to thrive. In fact, it's getting so big, it makes me want a tank upgrade. It's not gonna happen but it makes me want it. My fox coral continues to grow. It looks amazing. I love how open and fluffy it looks. It's been a super easy coral to keep. I've had this thing for two or three years now. It looks amazing. I recommend these to anybody. Beautiful coral. My scullies, they keep looking better and better. These were rescue scullies. I got them because I didn't think they were gonna survive and they were dirt cheap. But here we are and they are really nice looking scullies. They're not quite grown out to the edges like you'd want on a really high-end scully, but really, these are nice corals. Rescue scullies are something I would recommend looking for in stores. If somebody's willing to part with one cheap and allow you to try to save it, it can be done and wow, what results you can get. So the Ulophilia, the Blasto, and the Sophastria are all doing really well. These are all slow growing corals, but they are starting to grow together. I kind of keep wanting to move one because those two are about to touch, but they don't seem to be hurting each other. So I think I'm gonna gamble and see what they do. 
I've got a nice little rock back here in some dark shade. So maybe at restock in two weeks, I should be looking for some pretty cool sophastry to put back there. It'd be a really cool coral that would do well in that spot. If there's one coral in this tank that really stands out to me as something a new hobbyist should be looking into, that's kryptonite candy cane. They grow huge and they get this big brain look to them. But you can buy single heads very reasonably. They're easy to get. The kryptonite candy canes are fantastic corals for the beginner. And you know what, even in an advanced hobbyist tank, they look fantastic. To end this video, I'm gonna give you guys a reminder about Reefstock. Reefstock is March 7th and 8th in Denver, Colorado. I will definitely be there March 7th. So if you see me, come up, say hi, we'll talk reefing. And until the next one, I will see you later.